Um, my name is Saskia. I'm the founder and director of the Institute for Art and Olfaction. A nose is a term traditionally used to describe people whose profession it is to compose perfume. However, uh, obviously we all have noses unless something horrible happened to us like Tycho Brahe. Uh, and we all use them daily. So in a way we're all noses and some of us of course use ours as, par as part of our life's work. So with this in mind, the Institute for Art and Olfaction is pleased to introduce our online conversation series, which you are here in right now. Uh, each conversation takes the form of a, of a one hour chat where extraordinary thinkers and artists and distinctive perfumers from around the world share their unique perspectives on what it means to be a sensorial human in the world. Today, we're super pleased to, uh, to welcome Catherine Haley Epstein. Um, Catherine Haley Epstein is an artist and an award-winning writer, a designer and a curator. She has written since 2012 on the blog Mind Amaro, and we'll pop that link in the chat in a minute. Uh, she's also written for Temporary Art Review and Aromatica Poetica. In 2019, she published Nose Dive, a book for the curious seeking creative potential through their noses, and co-founded the Odor Bet project with art historian and wonderful person Carol Verbeek in 2020. Catherine continues to collaborate with artists and writers around the world on unique initiatives that explore intersections between art and other disciplines. Her project On Forgetting, first installed in Portland, Oregon, started the journey to her researching and working with scent. Catherine has exhibited her work globally, conducts workshops on the use of scent and creative practices, and advises companies on scent-related projects. So Catherine, welcome. So I want to start just asking you sort of about you in general, like what, you know, what your background is, what, how, perf how you came to perfumery. So let's start with, you know, where were you born? Where were you raised? What were your early interests? Um, mm. We'll start there. Okay. So I was born in Montreal um, and I, I mean, I actually have had a very strange trajectory to being an artist, um, but <clears throat> I moved also into Boston and um, uh, art has never been the first thing on my mind for a long time. In fact, when I was in college in upstate New York for two years, I was a math major because it actually, for me, advanced math is also very ambiguous, like art is. Um, but I took an art class, and um, when I took the art class, I actually found myself making drawings and not seeing where the time went. Um, and that was really magical and strange. And so I, I started uh, to change my major, which was really not good for my family, but <laughs> I did that. Um, and... Uh, so, but I, I, I graduated from school and I started working in museums and then I started working in business. So like I have like eight years as a management consultant, like which is unrelated at all to any of the stuff that were, you know, you know, the creativity. I couldn't because for practical reasons, I had to pay back my student loans. I had to do all this stuff. Um, but there has never been a point in my life where uh, that moment in when I had, when my drawing assignment was to draw drapes and... I did it for eight hours and didn't see the time go. Wow. Like, so yeah. So yeah. art was like, uh, it's not going off of the chopping block. It's here to stay. Yeah. So, but yeah. you know, so it took about 20 years for me to be able to do the art. Um, and I will say that because I'm kind of coming from two brains, when I started my art practice, I always had a writing practice. So the writing practice was a way for me to, I don't want to say justify the art that I was doing, but I had a lot of questions about it because I didn't agree with a lot of what the art was going sort of contemporary wise. So like mm. I wrote a ton so that I could actually, um, uh, I, I, I've explained it to people like, it's like, it's like when your hair is knotted and you need to sort of brush your hair to get all the knots out. So the writing for me is like, it's calming everything out and like trying to like where where does my art sort of sit in the stream of art history or does it not yeah like, i mean well writing's i mean a really useful I, I don't know i mean i get what you're saying it makes total sense because like it, it allows you to reflect it allows you to to assess and analyze your work uh, and and compare and all that so yeah so your writing practice is a practice in and of itself as well it's not yes right no it, no it's very supportive but it's also in in it's inspired for two reasons. So I just shared the one reason, like, why am I doing art? What's the importance? Like, what's the lineage that I'm doing the art in? That's the one. And the second is I'm actually like 
my whole family is not artists. So this is not something that this comfortable dialogue where we're you know, talking about these things. And so my whole um, goal is to take these like really complicated things and just distill it so that we can talk like really normally about it. So it's very important for my husband, who's not an art historian, who doesn't understand contemporary theory, it's kind of important for him to understand why you know why it's important and why he should pay attention why everybody should pay attention so it's like the i feel like art had kind of sits in this like golden box that like someone has to have a key to unlock which is garbage pants and so i'm like i just i really am inspired by just breaking things down unthreading everything mm -hmm. and explaining them does your husband yes. does he read i mean does, does it work yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But like, so, so to, to, to that sort of like pedantic, like, you know, we want to make it democratic or we want to like put it in the, uh, one of the things I wrote in Nosedive was that art, and I talked about it last year in Milan, which was a total weirdo thing, but <laughs> I, I, you know, it's translation. Art is translation. It's that simple. You don't need an MFA for it. You don't need to, it's really about your translation of something. Now, artists, like fine artists and the ones who land in art history, well, they're speaking in the same language, but they're doing it at a cadence that's so specific and it makes it art. Yeah. All um, of us are artists, but in that sense, we translate things. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and art is the great communicator. So you, you said, I just, I got a little distracted because you're like, oh, I talked about this in Milan, which was a weirdo thing. And it, it made me think about, about this because you occupy a place where you're sort of between practices, you know? Tell me a little bit about how you occupy that place. I actually, I feel very lucky because I did spend all that time as a management consultant where I can kind of read a situation and be like, well, that's not what this audience needs to hear. And so, I'm going to switch it to this. So I, I had a very naively, um, I had a large presentation to share that was all about um, what it means to make perfume as an artist. And then I stood in the room and I understood what essence was all about. And I was like, you know, <laughs> totally. so as, as they were putting the slides up, I was like, skip that one, skip that one. So like I totally changed on the fly. Um, yeah, and I, I don't mind being in both of the worlds, actually, because I think it's important. Did you have the experience where, where I mean, because I, I, I also spoke in Milan and I had this experience where I'm talking about like, you know, independent practices and, and you know, you inevitably get that like, yes, but are they real perfumers? You know, you get this sort of yes. suspicious response that it's really hard to avoid. So how did you, how do you deal with that uh, when you're dealing with this sort of industry side of things? Mm, or do you? Yeah. Um, no, I do. I actually, ha I have, I do work with businesses about this. So, but they're, they're not, they just need like a tactical thing. You know, I need this, I need this, I need this. But I, um, very early on when I first made my installation and my thing and I was like, but I can't call myself a perfumer, but yes, I can. Cause I actually did all the things that perfumers do. I, I, I mean, I did the same things that any other perfumer would do. Um, and I can I continue to do so. <laughs> so I mean I don't. But sitting in that space of essence and the thing and like that's another space where they can use things like ifra. You're not following that, and you're not you know. Um, but perfumery, um, it's tight. It's tight. I don't I don't live in the tight space. The moment you define yourself, or the moment you make a division with something then there's anxiety that happens. And the reason, like I live in a world that's like, it, I'm here and I do this and I do that and I never make a division and people don't know what to do with me. They're yeah. like, who are you? What are you doing? Which is baloney. Like everyone should feel comfortable having no divisions and understanding everything's connected. And so, um, to sort of like go, oh, I'm a perfumer. Well, yes, I'm a perfumer and I'm a this and I'm a that. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's garbage pants, I think, to quote you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Did you quote me? I, I, wrote so. it, I actually wrote it down. I wrote down garbage pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. 
great. It tells you what sticks in my mind, right? Teenager. Um, uh -huh. So, so I want to ask you a little bit about sort of what brought you to perfumery because we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about scent, obviously. Um, so I had an installation that I was doing a long, long time ago uh, for my artwork in my studio for ten years or more. I was doing work on Psyche, the myth of Psyche, and and her four tasks where she has to do the four tasks so she can be reunited with her arrows for love. Um, and for every task, I would spend two to three years making artwork about it because all the tasks are very symbolic. Um, and where scent came in was the task of filling the flask where she had to get the water out of the um, the waterfall. She was scared. Zeus came in and did this and got it. That whole action of him doing that is about forgetting, right? So you have to, when you want something, you have to kind of put your blinders on, you have to forget everything, and this is what happens. And so uh, I just made a bunch of work for two years about what it means to forget, but not in a bad way, just like in this, like, this is a human thing. We're predators. We are actually predators. We're actually designed to be forgetting, ignorant, whatever, so that we can get the thing we want. So I just did work about that for two years. And then I just was really cheeky and said, well, everyone should have a forgetting thing in their bathroom, you know, like a medicine chest that says, you know, forget five years, 10 years. And then I thought, well, how does that smell? Like this was before I even touched a molecule or a material. And I was like, oh, how does it smell? And then I pulled in this, uh, at least her, like when you watch movies or when you read fairy tales, like when someone walks into the forest, the forest is this a giant symbol of transformation, huge transformation. So that's where the forgetting happens. And so the smell should be what it smells like when you go into the forest. So the, the forget last night was like, what it smells like when you're sitting in your car and you open the door and you're on a trailhead. So you still have the leather and the thingy and the whatever. And then the five years is like, you're starting to smell the trail and the flora and all the things. And then 10 years, 20 years, you actually start to smell wood burning and blah, blah. So that was the, but <laughs> I didn't know how to do any of that. So I just looked online and learned how to do the essential oils with the cheap vodka thing. <laughs> oh dude, totally been there. <laughs> The cheap vodka is like the win. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. My favorite part of it was like, I had a ton, I, I mean, a ton, three babies. And so I was using baby food jars and I wasn't even covering them with a lid. I was using tin foil and wow. I would put them in the closet for six weeks. Cause that was like the magic maceration. It was like six weeks. <laughs> so I'd go in after six weeks and I was like, yeah, so wow. bad. There's something so really bad. ritualistic about that. I like it with the baby food jars and this magic six weeks and, and when working right? with mythology, I mean, it's, it's cool. There's a lot of richness to that, you know, I mean, I agree. I yeah. agree. And it was, so it, that was interesting. And then I had dinner with a dear friend, Paolo Salvagione, who is an artist and engineer, amazing dude in the Bay area. And he, I was laughing with him about it. I'm like, can you believe this little experiment? And he said, you need to speak to Mandy Aftel. And so he email introduced me to her. And then I started workshopping with her and it was fabulous. And you learned, yeah, a lot. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she has beautiful materials. So. She does, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so that's, so that's, that that means you were working primarily with nat or only with naturals. I assume has that since changed or yes, that's yeah. changed totally. Yes, yeah. uh, yes, uh, and I, in my book in Nosedive, I kind of joke about it where I say like when you learn from naturals, you're actually learning how to water ski on an ocean. Right. Meaning you're like there's a lot of deviance and weirdness that happens with the materials. Um, when you learn from synthetic materials, you're actually on like a flat lake. It's very easy to predict what's going to happen to those right. materials. Yeah. So that's a, that's a pretty good metaphor, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At what point did you start to incorporate the synthetics into your practice and, and why? I'm like very eye dominant and um, I would like to incorporate hot pink into a smell. <laughs> Right. And that doesn't happen with naturals. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't think it. Yeah, no. 
Oh, so what's the synthetic? I mean, rubafran? No, that's more like neon. What, what's hot well, pink in synthetic I, for you? Well, great question. Great question. I'm always looking and trying to figure it out. But like, that's kind of like a, that's, that is an, a vibrancy that you don't, you don't get that in, or a neon or something like that. Yeah. There's like, and also like what I just sent to you, like that lovely yes. project that we did, which was, I, I mean, everything idea. about, yes. And everything about that was like, it couldn't have happened without those things. Um, you know, when you're a visual artist and you're wanting to do something. And I think when I wrote you a note about the, the cabin thing, you know, there's such a thing as a poor image in the visual arts. Right. So there's a lot of artwork that is basically like the detritus of society, meaning we take all of the like internet images and the recycled things and the processed images and like that's a poor image, right? Like, so it's not like you just painting what you're seeing in your studio. It's actually you taking things from all over the place, which is this very, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible and it's fun. And it's also something that's reflecting now. So if you can do that in scent, what would that look like? Well, it would look like you asking people all kinds of things and just throwing it together without an aesthetic principle in mind. So that's what that was about. So postmodernism, basically. <laughs> kind of, but past that. Yeah, well, post. My husband and I often joke, like, what happens after post post postmodernism? I mean, is there any is well, there anything after postmodernism? You know, if. Well, not well, I, I'd like you to correct me, but there's actually not been an art movement since Andy Warhol brought the grocery store into the gallery. Hmm. I think the there's YGAs not... might disagree. What about olfactory I, art? What about olfactory art? I don't know if it qualifies as a movement yet. Does it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. And I actually love that. And that's why I love being so closely affiliated with it because everything's broken and everything's not quite right. And this whole... Uh, just this movement away from the body and like the whole thing like what's that all about like we're humans we're not meant to just like look at something like one of the most beautiful things thank you by the way for making your organization because if your organization did not exist I wouldn't have had some random like you know web search about doing things and I found you guys and this is how you know, I got to go to the hammer and people got to smell things on their yeah, bodies. Yeah, yeah, when you're, yeah, yeah th this is major. I mean, like people take the things that you've made, they put it on their bodies and then they walk around. Like what? Yeah. yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, it is. It's I major. mean, one of the things that attracted me to scent, you know, those years ago was, was just that was that sort of uh, in, the tangible, not tangibility, but the visceral aspect of it. Like, you know, it, it's you, you, well, I'm, I'm not saying anything and nobody on this call knows, but you, you literally are like taking it in, you know, and it's, it's, we're re-embodying ourselves in such a digitized world, ironically said over Zoom, but, uh, you no, know, it's so <laughs> true. There's something to it, you know, and I could see why it's really ripe for artists, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so, okay. So tell us a little bit about this project that, that you referenced and, so, and I, I've been hired by hotels to do scent curation development. And I thought it would be fun to share with folks the creative process. Like, what does that mean? So when someone says, you know, make a smell for a hotel, well, what on earth does that mean? And you, and, and, and I met with you all in October. So I thought, and you guys live in Los Angeles. So it had to be Hollywood adjacent. So Bates Motel it was. I shared with them my creative process that I've done with actual clients, but with the pretend client who is Norman Bates. And so, you know, what is it, what do you do when someone says sent my hotel? Like, it's so weird. Right. Um, and so we went through like a lot of the, like what you would do if you were doing marketing for anything else, like make a logo for me. Like, what does it look like? You got to like take all the stakeholders, understand what's going on. And, it was so much fun and the most delightful thing was because we went through everything I, I shared them with them a ton of research about um like you know the smell of fear for example the smell of fear is something that our government is researching is that right oh yes oh yeah oh, i didn't know that so, Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, shared with them all kinds, and then what is the smell of death? And oh, by the way, all the white flowers have that indole kick mm. and that smells like a decaying body. Mm. Wow. 
So sex, death, all the stuff is very closely intertwined. So we talked about that and it was so fun. So at the end, you know, we had, you guys have all the great materials. So it was like, okay, everybody go and look and see what you would choose based on this kind of abstract. Um, and it was fantastic because half of them were trying to make things like a scent that would make Norman calm down. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was like Norman and they called it Norman go or like Norman stop. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, oh, it's so great. And so like half of them were like, no, how do we make him not kill? And then like half of them were like, how do we make him kill? Or like, like make him in his element, whatever. It was so fun. And, and the fact that you had all those materials was terrific. Because people oh. could just go ahead and, yeah. And just tinker, yeah. So, but, but, so it's interesting because I find this is always challenging with when you're working creatively with scent is like, Okay, so I'm looking at the, the formula. Is it okay if I share like some of this information? Oh, I don't you care, Joe. Okay, you cool. Can. There's a carnation accord. There's chocolate drizzle, coffee bean, coriander, hyacinth, tabanon, tangerine, leather, and civet. So, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of, okay, the purpose of the perfume, which I, I guess was to, to create the, the smell for a ho the hotel, the Bates Motel. How do you mm -hmm. equate these materials with that? I mean, this is a challenge yeah. in, in olfactory art because you can be literal and say, well, I chose, you know, chocolate because... I don't no. know, uh, the sweetness of right. whatever, or and I told carnation because you know he right. likes carnations, but but when you get to that step beyond that literal one to one translation and you start to think really abstractly, perfume olfactory arc gets really really hard because you have this problem of communication where I you and I can both get the joke if I put in rubafaran, but for most people they're like I don't know it smells bright you know, so how yes, do you deal yes, with yeah. that as an olfactory well, artist? I mean, oh, right, and so I will say that I have purposely not read any kind of things about notes and the families and the things and whatever I, that is not part of my conversation at all no no nope, nope. i know it exists and i know there's beautiful wheels and thingies out there they're great but i don't even go there but in this particular and because i don't have a reputation to make something that smells good exactly i don't i i, I feel very comfortable just kind of looking at i looked at like I mean, there were, I mean, people wrote things down. There were like 300 different notes that I could have chosen from. And for me, it was just a very um, instinctual kind of gut thing. There was never like a, it needs to be this. Or I, I feel like that, again, that's the beautiful place that scent brings us, which is abstract, totally abstract. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't even, I'm not looking at a visual. I actually don't even know the, practicalities of a carnation or anything like I don't I don't I don't know much on purpose <laughs> yeah but but yes. it, nevertheless you you know if you are super abstract you you do hit that problem where the communication factor that, that is so crucial to art as you yourself said earlier it, it falls apart with olfactory art because you know again you know uh, you know one person's terrifying is another person's cute you know it's maybe not yes. a good example but so how do you how do you supersede that? Do you, do you incorporate visuals, text? What, what do you do to help place I it? actually, yeah, I actually don't market any of my work. <laughs> so I actually don't need to put it in a spot. Like I don't need to, like, this is the, I think that's the issue where like, if I had, cause, cause to me, the smell, I mean, you know, the cabin one, um, and Donna, by the way, please send me an address for you. Cause, Yes. I can I can um, share I could share this with her. She's local. Too. Oh, good. You're like next yeah, door. Okay, yeah, good. save save so, me some some trouble. Don, I'll send this to you. Uh, so, I, yeah, uh, that's a great question. I feel like there's an element of. Um, so here's the deal. There's part of our brain that like is the place where we. It's over here actually, and it's where we process <laughs> smell, and it's also where we process language. The same place. Mm. which is so cool, which is why there's so many blogs and reviews and the thingies and this inspiration to talk about the smell. Um, but I, I, I actually just much more appreciate that. So, so I would call cabin one, it's kind of like a chance piece, sort of just kind of throw it out there. Uh, there was a little bit of editing, but honestly, like I put all of the things that everybody wrote, I put them all on scent strips. And I just started kind of doing this, thinking of Norman and the thingy and like, 
and it's it I, and I know I sent to you a note and said it's terrifying I meant it's terrifying in the sense that it's like not marketable right yeah well I mean, it's hard, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Marketing and art are, should should be mortal enemies, but yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, but but okay. So forget the marketing, but think in the context of a gallery. You know, if you if you were to exhibit this yeah. you know, without any context at all, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm asking question. rhetorically a little bit, I think, but I'm just it's curious about your question. thoughts. Yeah, it's a good, good, good question. It's so good because as soon as you start to open your mouth, you're going to move people in certain directions. It's so yeah. powerful, and so that whole idea of keeping it just what it is. So let's pretend we had a gallery and the whole space was dedicated to the scent of the Bates Motel. Okay, you actually don't wanna leave any notes. You don't wanna say the thingies. You wanna just like have them walk in. And, and, and what, I, what we all created is not the appropriate thing for this particular end game, mm. but yeah. So you would make it knowing that no one would look at it. Because that's the that's the beauty of the sense stuff, right? I mean, it's why impressionists didn't finish their paintings. Hmm. It's beautiful. I find it very challenging because I I, I like precision, and you know, like you, I, I have an art background, and and I'm always like, well, what the hell? How how can you actually properly communicate? Uh, but I guess maybe visceral disgust typically communicates pretty well. So. Okay, so, so tell me a little bit uh, about what you're working on right now. I'm working on many things. So the odor vet came about, someone reviewed my book in like Switzerland. Basically, there's a little section in my book that is about taxonomy. So you need to sort of like very, be very, very, again, what we're talking about, like when you name things, when you start talking about things, like, like you have to be so mindful, like, because you need to just maybe rename it because it's stuck in a certain place. So um, I have a list of words in my book and the reviewer noted, oh, Caro Fierbeck is also interested in art historical terms. And so, <laughs> and so we started talking and she's, you know, she said, well, let's share our, our research. And so she's coming at it from a art historical standpoint and I'm coming at it from a more like you know, artists, morally, like anthropological science, like all the things, make-believe words, all the things. So we combine them and um, just the odor bet was, you know, just, I just threw it up on the internet and started, you know, it's not all of the words. It's just, it's just uh, a gesture to help people to reconsider how they think about our noses and 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 what we smell it's it's so incredibly deep and important as you know <laughs> i mean you know this you've started your own little institute about it so yeah so i but i psychologically i feel like you need to change the words before you can change the perspective so yeah, totally. yeah, I think words have, mm. have major impact. Uh, did you borrow from existing taxonomies or, or existing language structures? And of course, you know, the thing that comes is like scent pyramid, scent wheel, and Sisotolas's nasala were the three things that are. Sisotolas would land in something, it's an olfactory classification system. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, and there's others, and there's others that need to be reviewed and sort of really parsed out like Linnaeus and all those things those yeah. are like they're not totally appropriate in those days and maybe not now I don't know because all the the things that she's doing she's doing great things but they're all her thing mm -hmm. it's all her thing it's all her thing so she yeah, it sounds choice. like you're doing a, a taxonomy of the taxonomy which is kind of awesome yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no and there's no judgment in any of it but it's also like let's put it all in a giant space so we can all have our own moment and if you know, if I had my druthers and, and, and Carol and I have talked about this, it's not about her and I putting out anything except for it would be better if it was like a, not Wikipedia, but something quite different, but like where there's other people contributing in a more organic way. Yeah, so what are you, what are you thinking about these days? Like what are, what's, what's on your mind? <laughs> other than well, the world. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So the world is happening and I've got like the 25% of pie that's like, you know, art or anything else. But um, I am actually right now doing very deep media studies um, with my mentors where I'm doing a lot of mixed media work, um, which is very exciting. Um, it includes scent. 
Um, I'm also in graduate school. Um, and studying. I'm, I know yes, so I'm neuroscience studying. and psychology, which is crazy amazing. Yeah. No, it's fun and it's relevant and it's related. Always the mission is to put art back in people's lives. Imagination. If we can recall it something, let's just recall it imagination. So that's cool. So media study. So you're studying the media. So what does that mean in brass tacks? If you're able to talk about it, I don't want to force you to share. No, it's me. totally fine. It's totally yeah. fine. So I've had, um, I've had the same mentors for years and years and years since 1993, actually. Um, and wow. uh, yeah, no, it's like, um, and part of the process of doing the work with them is, is, is like a very um, condensed time thing where you're doing something, but you're doing so many things and so quickly that you're not actually, you don't have time to think about it. And so, so I've been painting my butt off and making collages and doing things and blah. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about uh, about the unfiltered uh, execution, you know, that that is it's liberating. I mean, I don't know. We all live in our heads yes. so much, you know. Like, That's has right. anything really cool come out of it that you're excited about? Yeah, or are you still sort of? I mean, tons. I, but I, it's it's more about the connection to the abstract. Where like you're not really there's something else happening above all of us, <laughs> and if you can find the medium that gets you there, like it's major. Yeah. So how are you? How are you? Uh, sorry, I'm just peppering you with questions. No, it's fine. It's fine. Sorry, Catherine. Do you, do you need a little <laughs> stretchy, no. breaky, like no, 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 no. I, I, what I was going to ask you is something I've been asking a lot of the people in my world just who are in set or in the arts or whatever. And, and it's, it's a tough question because there's maybe no answer, but how, how are you navigating being an artist and, and working with scent and working with all these things and doing all these practices uh, in the world that we're in. I mean, how are you making sense of it for yourself and for others? Um, right. And I, I think we are in the most exciting time ever. Okay, that's an awesome response because I kind of agree. I we're absolutely. Missing history. Yeah. Uh, it's so fantastic. So here's the deal. The art world, the art system, not working. Not at all. Hasn't been working for 20 plus years. It's just not working. And the perfume world, not working. Hasn't been working for a long time. I mean, like, do you understand? Yeah. There's, a, there's a whole thing there. And it's all kind of like, so it's like somebody took all the deck of cards and threw them on the floor. So we are all now in a position to pick them up in a way that's much more meaningful, much more exciting, much different. We have to do that. We have to do that. And I'm looking because I'm now, I mean, like I never used to watch what, like, I don't know what perfume flavors and thingies. I don't know anything like that. But I was joking with a dear friend who's on the call, I think, but <laughs> about like, you know, something happens where the old guard starts to say like, here we are in a new world. Right. And yet, and yet, it's like a pizza parlor saying, like, here's our new product. It's a pizza with cheese on it. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so there's like a lot of movement that is ready to happen. And it's so exciting. And actually, it's the only time that like perfume could meld properly with art. But there's too many divisions right now. And what we were talking about earlier, like divisions create anxiety. Mm -hmm. and right now there's no divisions everything's kind of broken yeah yeah it's so divided that there's no there's no hole to divide anymore right yeah break it all up break it all up yeah build it back up you've been doing that you've been doing that though you've been doing an amazing job with the iao oh, like you really yes. have oh my god are you kidding me like you've really inspired like a million well thousands i don't know <laughs> But a lot of people, so it's fabulous. But like Thanks, that, that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nice no, seriously. seriously. The daily, the daily is a lot of administration. So I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. But yeah. this isn't. This is about you, Mama. So, um, so okay. tell me, do you still have relationships with a lot of the perfumers? How, how do people make sense of your of, of something like this cabin number one? Do you present it as art, or do you present it as perfume? Or there's actually not a roadmap, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, like everything's broken, so we yeah, make a new yeah, roadmap, yeah, and like yeah. I don't know how to proceed on many things, but I absolutely love sharing um, 
you know, for those who are interested, like share that. And I think maybe other folks that you might've talked about are like maybe doing lines where they're sharing their perfume. I'm not quite there yet. To me, it feels like such an intimate process where it's actually, it's oh, kind of, and in my book, it's so goofy, but I called it push-ups. It's like you do your push-ups. Yeah. It's not yeah. like I'm a skier or I'm a whatever. I only do the push-ups to do the, yeah. it's like a supportive role. And, and I, I know that's, it's not. I mean, in the reality, it's not. It's actually like this bigger thing, but I haven't put it up there as a thing yet. Yeah, well, I, I get it. I, you know, people sometimes say, hey, you should start a line. And I'm like, absolutely bloody not. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't have the guts for that. Get decimated and my ego would kill, you know? Oh, um, I know. But I at know, some I point, know. you got it. You got to just, it come, my mom, when I was a kid, I was a shy kid. And my mom always said, hey, you know, as you I mean, just owns, you own yourself, like own, own it. You know what I mean? And I mean, at some point, you just got to yeah. be like, hey, man. This is me, you know, you don't like it. No okay. Problem, you know, I, don't I know. know. I, I know. Well, so, so, so when I had that first exhibition with on forgetting, yeah, th there was a woman who came in, we had like a closing vernissage. Yeah. And like this woman came in in Portland, Oregon, off the street with a thick, French accent and she came up to me and she said can I buy this and I was like yeah oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, you can't I mean this is a pretend project but thank you because I think you know what you're smelling and yeah. so and so to your point about like I and you and Luca Turin were people that I looked at I I was just uh Christophe Ladumel just Daniel. shared, yes, he shared um, a talk between master perfumers, which is mm -hmm. really fun to watch, yeah? Um, and they started talking about a Salon de Refuse, which oh, I understand so from the it. art world. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so from the oh, art I world. I love that concept. I, yeah, so I was like, yeah, that needs to happen. The rejected smells, totally. that needs to be an exhibition. Absolutely. I, I love that idea. I, I, yeah. My rejected husband and I are, smells. Are, yeah. Do the it. things nobody wanted, you know? Because somebody's going to love it. it, you know? Yeah. Do it. Do it. I'm do not going to do, do it. it. It sounds like Christophe has to do it, man. I'll help him. No, no, <laughs> he did not. He just shared that. No, he shared their talk. Mm. He just shared the talk. You, and also in America, please do rejected smells, especially after next week, okay? Well, here's the problem with that is, uh, you know, no one, uh, okay, some people are like, some people embrace rejection. Uh, most people are, don't like rejection. They feel bad about it, you know, especially if they have perfume brands. It's like, there's a lot of marketing involved in that, that I think, it, I think it would be challenging. I guess you just have to find the brands that are like super cool with it, you know, or the people. Or just know. or just the artists that have applied to the IAO awards. Many no, 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 no. I'm not even going there. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I like my like my I like my mental stability. Like I don't want to go there. <laughs> All right, I'll do it because I'm a neutral party. Please, yeah. Um, okay, we have a question from the audience. Uh, yes. So so um, okay. Ba -ba -ba. Can I ask Catherine, as working with sense and art and curation, uh, does gender play a role in your work? Do you consider different genders, um, male, female, and non-binary, and all the others I imagine while designing? And if things like hormone and pheromone affect people's perceptions of sense or perfume? Um, and I'll leave it at that. We can get to the rest of the question in a minute. So, so yes. what's your thought on gender, Catherine? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I will say that um, the work that I've had to do commercially with people um, has really veered into that space. I personally actually always veer, like my very first fragrance that I ever was like, signature fragrance is like Terre Her Herme. Like it was like a boy's man's thing. Yeah. Like I don't, I mean, I mean to me, gender and fragrance means nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, and when I work with clients who have spaces, you have to consider everybody who's walking in the space. So you can't actually make it either male or female. And I think that that, again, just to, to overwhelm the point, but as soon as you make divisions, you create anxiety. So there's never ever, you, you never would make something that's like, oh, I want the guys to smell this, or I want the girls to smell this. This is like, what's the mood? Yeah, Where are we? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. totally. 
Yeah, it's it's funny to me to think that people still consider gender in their scent purchases, but it, but I don't know. Like you, I'm I'm in this all the time. So most people in my world are like gender, you know. I yeah. there's this guy, um, there's this person I should say, speaking of gender, who identifies as non-binary here in LA, who works for Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, who gave a talk about gender euphoria fairly recently. That cool. And and their premise was that you know there's a celebration of gender. There's 50, I don't know so how many, great. so many genders that it becomes sort of like almost entirely relevant and totally irrelevant at the same time. I'll send you the it. link. I'll send everyone the link. Anyways, Please do. And I'll also share like, um, so I support, I love perfume. I love cologne. I love all the things. And I support our local business here. And I sent my I uh, yeah. So Fumeri is fabulous in Portland. Yeah. And I sent my husband for like a Mother's Day present or whatever. And like, I said, just go there. She knows everything and she's she's fantastic. So she, he went there, he bought a perfume and it is, oh my God, it is the most like floral, narcotic, like gorgeous. And he's the only one who wears it. Really? That's amazing. <laughs> You mean in the house or in the world? <laughs> no, like he'll like he'll put it on and he's he actually likes it. Yeah, that's you know my my husband made himself a tuberose perfume uh, yes. when I when I could still entice him into the lab and and he he just loves it. He rocks this tuberose, you know. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're, what are we? We contain multitudes to misquote a, a book about that's it. biology. That's you know? it. We, we're, that's it. Yeah. Um, so there's another thought uh, from Rachel Ann Redding. Um, reflecting back on Andreas's talk earlier, if you feel such a strong connection between scent and language, why do you think so few cultures have a vocabulary for scent? Okay, I did not listen to Andreas's talk, but... Oh, yeah. Andreas uh, gave a talk earlier, but don't Good. worry about that part. Just... Well, so, yeah, why do you... I don't know. I don't know if... Scent and language. Know. Okay, he is. Yes, so such a strong connection between scent and language. Well... Ah, yes. So there's actually some, there are some cultures that have a major language for scent. Um, so it's like humanly possible. <laughs> so there's a lot going on there. And I think that we have been living in a very specific area um, that doesn't allow for that abstract space and doesn't believe in that abstract space and doesn't give it credence. And so that's why why the language doesn't exist. But um, please contribute to the odor bed. Yes, that's <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> so Rachel, here we go. Um, Don, and Donna chimes in saying that the, she made her husband a jasmine perfume, which is oh beautiful. Perfume. Oh my god, men, men who love this is it. Unite, yeah. Love it. Um, burr, burr, burr. All right, guys, we have about, these these talks always go so quickly, so quickly. So I, I'm, I'm bummed to report that we have about five to 10 minutes left. So if anybody has any questions for Catherine, now's a really good time to, to pop them either in the chat or, or unmute yourself and just ask. Um, uh, so by all means, folks, otherwise I'll just invent questions and that, that never goes well. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? What's your favorite color? What are you having for dinner? <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, Sasuke, you're silly. You're so smart. Stop. Yeah, I, I'm smart, yes, but yes. I, I get goofy. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, uh, by the way, hi, Adis. Nice to see you up there in Canada. What's going on? Oh, Toronto? yay. East or West Coast? Or Toronto. Toronto. Middle. Yes. Middle, right? Fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Um, well, cool. Well, so so I'm gonna make sure to everyone gets uh, Catherine's links and whatnot. Although I think I already popped them in, but I'll follow up with that. Catherine, any last thoughts? Anything that, that are on your mind with uh, with um, scent that you you think people should be thinking about more? Obviously, language. Um, yes. Uh, actually, Tessa th throws in. Uh, thanks, Tessa, for for chiming in. Some notes who have flipped have flipped gender assignments historically, like Violet, which used to be associated with men and now is woman. Yeah, but it is all a bunch of quote garbage pants. <laughs> Can I get a shirt? <laughs> garbage, garbage pants. Happen <laughs> <Catherine> Lily Epstein. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, Tessa, Tessa, yes. And by the way, violet leaf. Tessa, have you smelled violet leaf yet? It's very different and fabulous. I just made a scent with violet leaf, and it was like, 
wow, it's so different than the violet that we always assume to be with the violet. The violet leaf is very like stemmy and leafy. Mm, yeah, okay, I'll send you some, Tessa. And actually okay. shouting out Tessa, and I, I, I think I remember yes. this correctly, that Tessa has a new project called Scent of Plates. Am I getting that right? Yes, Tessa? yes. Thank God. Uh, so you guys should, if, especially if you guys are in New York, um, check this out. I've been following her on Instagram. And it's yeah, cool. she's a great, she's a great, she's great. So I wouldn't say, so we got like literally two minutes, but I would, I, I, I want to have a gnarly conversation about art and, and scent, like a gnarly one. <laughs> like, cause there's like a lot, cause they're, they're, they need to connect. Yeah. Like they need to connect and it's like, yeah and, and it's it's their time to do that connection do you think there's just what not enough resources not enough talk about it what what do you think is no, missing uh, no no it's just this whole idea of everything broken down oh right yeah you're That's the great all. i think i think i think i'm understanding that your your impulse is to unite in the world yeah i think i'm getting much. that about you which is cool and, and necessary can i ask yeah. a question yeah please Hi, Catherine. My name is Courtney Stone. Um, and so in, in this vein about like connecting art and, and scent, like what, so what is, how are you unifying? Like wh what is your philosophy or approach to unifying them? Like what are the principles that guide you when you're unifying? unifying? Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's like a really 50 minute response, <laughs> but just... <laughs> No, no, I love that. And I love that you're working with your hands there. Hey, huh? I'm watching you. You're working with your hands. That's fabulous. So this is so scent is is in your wheelhouse already. You're already full bodied. You're doing the whole thing. Um, and so I would just say like, um, my whole like presentation about it in my world and my local world and wherever is like, it's actually a so the scent part is a part of the tool of the whole thing. So it's like, you don't have to have like an ultimate fragrance or you don't have to have a thing. But like, if you're, if you're a photographer and you're stumped, well go take a walk around the neighborhood and, and write down what you smell. Like not a lot of people are gonna do that, but if you do do it, you are going to reap the rewards of scent. So this, it's so powerful, like really so powerful, like it's nuts. So are you sort of saying to, to incorporate scent into your daily practice as a human and that, that will inform yes. your practice as an artist? Yeah. Yes. It's major. So it's very major. holistic and good way of looking at it. Yeah. It's, it's nice. major. Yeah. It's major. The so cool thing about that also it. is it's not performative. You're actually incorporating it into your, you're not, you know. Performing. It's not so, exhibitionist. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's yeah. more. It's more authentic than that in a way. You know. So not that. Not that performance is. Look, we're being humans. We love yeah. smelling. Yeah. We're so shy about smelling. Like, smelling's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And eating. Yes, Donna. <laughs> Donna. Um, there was one question I just wanted to touch on, and then we're going to have to stop because we all have to go eat. Speaking of eating, but um, where, but, but where did I? I lost it. Oh no. Uh, oh, Rachel asked, maybe I did I already ask this, uh, ask if, if you could elaborate just a bit on why you steer clear of classification and further knowledge regarding fragrance materials. I think it relates to the blinders thing you were talking about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I stayed clear of it um, so that I wouldn't have a biased thing when I smelled something. Um, I have never used a wheel. I've worked with Mandy Aptel though, and she has a very specific thing, which I've appreciated, but when you're working in a creative space, you cannot, um, you need to use more of the, the gut stuff to guide you. That's a really great way of, uh, of I think, ending this. So, um, Catherine, I want to thank you extremely, extremely for, for joining us for this time. I'm so happy Thank to catch you. up with you for real because I don't think we have ever actually talked for more than 10 <laughs> minutes at a time. <laughs> Thank you. There's something about my ADHD. So um, it's really nice to hear what you're up to. And I Thank will follow you. up with everybody with a link to the video once I've edited it down. And uh, obviously, Catherine, you can follow her on, on Instagram at MindMarrow and there's websites, CatherineHaleyEpstein.com mindmarrow.com, odorbet.com. I'll pop it all in the email that I send you guys probably tomorrow. So.
Thank you, Saskia. You're amazing. Oh, well, likewise, Catherine. Thanks for spending the time. And um, yeah, keep keep up the good work, man. In the in the crazy you times, too. work is important. So you too.